Hi, my name is Luisa Nera, and I'm the Technical Director for the Center for Chemical Process Safety. I'm here at the 12th Global Congress on Process Safety, where we have a very special guest today. Mark Cox is with Eastman, and he's the Senior Vice President of Manufacturing, Supply Chain, and Engineering at Eastman Chemical. And uh, we'd like to welcome him. He's going to be our guest speaker at lunch today. Mark, uh, welcome to Houston. Thank you. Good to be here. Uh, I know that your talk today is going to be on process safety. It's personal. And having seen you in action, in Kingsport, Tennessee, talking to your employees and working with them. I, I know that it is a passion for you. Yeah. Uh, can you tell us a, a little bit about what you'll be speaking about this afternoon? Certainly, and Louisa, it's a pleasure to be here and thank you for inviting me. Yes, I'll be speaking about process safety and that personal aspect of it for leaders for every participant in the chemical industry. And I'll be calling upon all of the members of the Congress to take a moment to look in the mirror and just ask themselves, as we go through the basics again and remind ourselves of why it is we do this, the social contract we have as chemical manufacturers with our communities, with our employees, with our shareholders, with our customers, why is it that we are so focused on process safety. And I would argue that the reason is that the world counts on us to do so many important things, to make so many materials that improve housing in impoverished areas, to improve drinking water, to improve food supply. In the more developed world, we do things that improve the quality of life for human beings as well. But we can't do that at the cost of human lives or human suffering that could come if we don't do process safety well. Thank you. Um, one of the things that we try to do when, when we set up these interviews is the, the executives that we're talking to, to get you to think about when you first got into industry, when you were young and going through that, and things that you might learn that new graduates or, or new engineers coming in uh, or others could, could learn. Yes, well, I, Louise, I, I've had the fortunate opportunity to be the understudy of some very strong process safety leaders, not only in Eastman, but in the industry. And I am very grateful to them. And I would say the thing that I have learned from them is that there is no substitute for rigor. No substitute for rigor. Uh, so whether you have a background that is steeped in the technical world in engineering, or you have risen, say, to leadership in a chemical company via another route that may be finance-oriented, for example, there is no substitute for yourself becoming a practitioner and an understander of the fundamentals of process safety. And that gets to there's no substitute for rigor. Okay. So that, that's about <laughs> expecting, expecting from your team rigor in the area of process safety and inspecting the basics again, expecting and inspecting to ensure that rigor is being employed. And I think that combination, you as a leader becoming an expert to the extent appropriate in the fundamentals, as well as expecting and inspecting to ensure your organization is practicing rigorous process safety principles is the key. So again, there's no silver bullet in that regard. Mm. So this afternoon when you're, when you're talking about process safety, it's personal. Um, can, can you tell us a little bit about what you're going to bring to that from a personal aspect? Sure. Well, I'm going to talk about uh, an historical event that occurred at Eastman a bit that was a, a bad outcome in terms of process safety, and it resulted in loss of life. But I'm also going to tie that in to, to how that affected me, because I grew up in Kingsville, even though I wasn't alive when that occurred. But I'm also going to challenge folks to think about an, an important intersection that sometimes maybe we don't think about. And that is the intersection between personal safety, personnel safety, mm -hmm. if you will, and pro 
process safety and how sometimes I think we're tempted to think about those somewhat separately, incident rates versus outcomes uh, from process safety incidents, but I'm going to issue a challenge that we think about them together and how they are interrelated. And, and let me close with a thought, too. I said earlier, there is no silver bullet, and I know that's cliche, but what I mean by that is whether we think about the simplest personal safety episode, that is walking into work and using the handrail. The first piece of process, our personal protective equipment we encounter for the day really is the handrail mm -hmm. often as we go up the stairs or down the stairs. From that simple end, to the complex end of doing a hazard evaluation ahead of starting up a new chemical plant or designing a new chemical plant. Those are uh, a long way apart in terms of complexity, yet the rigor applied on both ends of that spectrum and in between, I believe, are the cords that we weave into, or the threads that we weave into a strong cord of process safety performance. Therefore, little by little in every situation, being rigorous, being thoughtful, being deliberate, brings us to a point where we say we have a strong process safety culture and it results, I believe, in strong performance. Great. Mark, I know we're, we're uh, short on time because we're going to have to take you to the lunch so you can present for us. I'm really excited about hearing your presentation and uh, and some of the interaction with with the audience. So I think that will be really great. And I'd like to, to thank you, not just for being here with us for the interview, but for your leadership at Eastman, your leadership in process safety, and what Eastman has brought to CCPS as a leader to move forward in process safety. Thank you very much. Thank you for your kind words. It's our pleasure and we thank you, Louisa, and CCPS for all you do to make our operations safer.